Death Row inmate is being euthanized with drugs. He was suddenly twitching and bruising as he was being tortured. Apparently his medication had been changed. Who would want to kill a dying man in such a cruel way? The police saw a message on the bowl. You can't fight fate. This reminded him of Clyde, who had disappeared for almost 10 years. Clyde had a happy family. He had a beautiful wife and a lovely daughter. But his happiness was shattered by the sudden ringing of the door. Two men burst into his home and beat him violently with baseball bats. When Clyde was defeated, two men tied him up. Clyde's wife was also beaten to the ground by the strong men. Not only did they make money in the house, they also went after Clyde's wife. Clyde looked at what was happening in front of them and was devastated. He wanted to kill these scum with his own hands. They didn't even let Clyde's daughter go. As they left, they humiliated Clyde and told him, you can't defy fate. Afterwards, the police opened an investigation. Clyde approached the prosecutor and gave him the details of the case. But the prosecutor made a deal with the devil. The prosecutor told him that the killer had accused his accomplice. That accomplice would get the death penalty and 10 years probation. The killer would get 3 years. Clyde didn't accept the verdict. But the prosecutor told him that this was the best possible outcome. That's the way the justice system works. On the day of the trial, the case was decided just like the prosecutor said it would be. And the killer was still saying, you can't fight fate. Can you? Clive watched the prosecutor and the killer shake hands. The scene seemed to be frown scene in time. He stared at the scene and then turned to leave. Clive disappeared for 10 years. 10 years later, the murderer gloats at the news of his accomplice execution. Little did he know that the demons of hell were already upon him. He received a phone call. The caller told him the police were coming. He ran to the window to see. Sure enough, many police officers came downstairs. So he followed the man's instructions and went to the place he said. He saw a police car. There was a police officer lying unconscious in the car. He immediately ran to the car and knocked the policeman awake and threatened him to take him to escape. Soon after they arrived at a safe place, he was about to kill the policeman to silence him. But then the phone ran again. He answered the phone. But then he realizes that the voice on the phone is from the cop. Next to him, the policeman had also taken off his disguise at that moment. The killer recognized him as Clyde, who had disappeared for 10 years. So the killer shot Clyde and tried to kill him, but the gun was tampered with. When he pressed the trigger, the poison hidden in the gun also penetrated his body. Clyde said it was tetrodotoxin. It would only immobilize him, but it won't affect his senses, because what awaits him is the judgment of hell. A murderer wakes up on a surgical bed. His limbs are tied and his body is immobilized. Clyde gives him an adrenaline shot to make sure he doesn't pass out. Clyde introduces him to various tools. These were the tools that would be used on him. The killer was so scared that his heart was racing. But Clyde didn't care. He turned on the video recording and began his massacre. By the time the police found the killer, he had already been cut into 25 pieces. His death was so brutal, even senior detectives could not stand to look at his body. The police quickly followed the clues and found Clyde. Because the warehouse where the killer died was his, Clyde also seems to anticipate the arrival of the police. He stripped naked in advance and waited to be arrested. After the police took him away, they found many books about the law in his house. Each book is only a professional lawyer can read and understand. And the prosecutor saw a picture of him shaking hands with his killer 10 years ago on the wall. What's going on here? Nick went back to the station to interrogate Clyde and ask if you killed him. But Clyde already knew the law. He answered every question. The prosecutor asked and seemed to say nothing. This made it impossible for Nick to convict him. So he asked Clyde what he wanted. But Clyde talked to him about a deal. Your bed is too hard. I'm having trouble with my back. If you bring me a big, soft mattress, I'll tell the truth about everything. How could a prosecutor be threatened by a murderer? He simply refused Clyde and walked out. But that's when Nick's family called. She was told that a video of the killer's murder had been sent to the house. The police knew that Clyde had done it, so they sent him a mattress. A few days later Clyde was brought to court. The prosecutor hoped the court wouldn't let Clyde off the hook so easily. But Clyde used the past case as an example to defend himself. He said the police had no evidence, no clues. They were seriously biased in doing so. Due to the lack of evidence, the judge had to let Clyde out on bail. The prosecutor was still arguing with the judge, but Clyde had a sudden change of heart. He yelled at the judge and said it was simply misleading. Clyde was eventually remanded in custody for contempt of court. Nick finds Clyde and asks if you killed him. Did you change the drugs that were used to execute the killer's accomplice? Clyde confessed to everything. But just when Nick thought the case was over, Clyde came up with another big story. This time he offered a deal. 
He wanted Nick to give him a steak dinner in exchange for the secret. Nick walked out of the interrogation room speechless, but the next thing he knew, he heard that the lawyer who had defended the killer had disappeared. That's when Clyde reminded them once again, you bring the lunch and the music. I want to eat and see this at one. The prosecutor finally gave him. He brought the food into the prison, but the warden didn't take it seriously. He forced the food to go through security again despite the agreed upon time. In the end, Clyde got the lunch he wanted, but the time they agreed upon was over. Even so, Clyde also told them where the lawyer was. They followed Clyde's instructions and found the lawyer. The lawyer was buried in the ground with an oxygen mask, but by now he was dead. He died at the exact time they had agreed that Clyde would finish his meal. It was all part of Clyde's plan, but the police were overdue for the meal. How could Clyde not have a problem with that? So he made his next move. Clyde ate the bone and steak, and then quietly hit the bones. He went around behind his cellmate and killed him. Clyde lounged in bed after the killing. When the warden came, Clyde's first words were that he wanted to take a shower. The warden was furious and ordered him to be put in solitary confinement. But that's exactly what Clyde wanted. The police used their connections to find out Clyde's identity. They learned that Clyde was a genius strategist. He was able to kill people he couldn't kill for millions of dollars without having to share a room with them. The comments he got from others were, if Clyde wants you dead, you have to die. Now they felt they couldn't let Clyde go, so they went to the judge to negotiate. The judge just decided to join their team, and the next thing you know, he's dead. How the hell did that happen? Once again, they were blown away by Clyde's methods. The doc came to Clyde and asked him what he wanted. Clyde asked them to drop all charges against him by six, or he would kill everyone. The prosecutor felt that even though he was in jail, he could still control everything outside. He must have an accomplice. So they took their team to work overtime to find the truth. 6 o'clock rolls around. I-6. The cops went home from work, but just as they were walking to their cars, the cars in the parking lot exploded. Prosecutors watched their fellow officers die in the flames. Many government officials were killed at once, and the police had no leads. The entire city is in a state of panic. The mayor asked them to get the situation under control as soon as possible. But the people who caused the panic were already in jail. What could they do? So they were forced to make a military order because Clyde was carrying out a series of acts of revenge. So Nick decided to send his family away early. But when he got home, he found a problem. There's a picture on his desk of him shaking hands with a killer 10 years ago. So he went after Clyde again. He brings Clyde out and rinse about his cruelty. Nick spoke of his helplessness in the justice system, but Clyde didn't think it was enough. He wanted to overthrow the justice system. On the day Nick went to mourn his companions, they were driving out one by one, but they were already being watched. Bullets were flying at them from all sides of the car. One shell hit a car and caused an explosion. Just when they didn't know what to, they found the results of an investigation. The police officers followed the clues and located one of Clyde's properties. They pried open the door and found that it was Clyde's secret base. They also found a secret passage in a covered car. The more they followed the tunnel, the more shocked they were. It leads directly to the prison lockup. There are many cross-dressing uniforms and contraband inside. An H cell was accessible. The police went up one of the stairs and came to Clyde's cell. At this time, the cell was empty. They continued to investigate and found that Clyde had also connected to the prison and other surveillance. Clyde changed his clothes and went out. This time he planted a bomb in the city hall, but the police already knew about his movements. They soon arrived with a bomb disposal expert. When the bomb disposal experts arrived on the scene, they found that the bomb was very powerful. Once the bomb was set off, the whole building would be destroyed. They didn't dare to do anything rashly. They didn't dare to let anyone find out about it, because if Clyde found out, he could blow them all up with one phone call. They were in a panic. Nick came up with an idea. When Clyde returned to his cell, Nick the prosecutor was already waiting inside. Clyde was surprised that his secret had been discovered. Nick said there was no other way out for Clyde now. Clyde said he had one more deal to make, but this time Nick turned him down. I will never make any more deals with you because that's what you taught me. Clyde was relieved. He thinks Nick is finally realizing his problem, but he still dials the phone and sets off the bomb. Nick reminds him that if you're going to push that button, then you're going to pay with your life. But Clyde dials the phone with determination. But Nick immediately closed the door and ran away. As the call rings, Clyde realized that the countdown to his life was on. He eventually took the bracelet his daughter had given him and died in the fire he had ignited. A lot of changes happen in a person's life. 
There may be one change that turns you against your nature, but there is some justice that should be upheld. That is the original aspiration that cannot be abandoned no matter what.